Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Patrick with Stacking Layers. Today's video, I'm gonna go over how to configure Clipper to get one of these uh, BQ microprobe uh, sensors to, to work. It's a little bit different than the BL Touch. I know in my previous video, I mentioned that it plugs in identically, but it does need to be configured slightly different. So let's get to the computer and I'll show you how to get that done. So here we are at the computer. I'm using the Fluid at the moment, um, but this will be the same with Fluid or Main Cell, so that doesn't really matter. Um, and what I recommend to do is to set up a new configuration file um, just for the microprobe. It just makes things clean and easy, and I'll show you how to get that going if you're not familiar. So first would be to add. Um, you're gonna add a file. This will be in Fluid, it's right here, this little X. Uh, main Cell, it's roughly in the same zone with your, your configuration files. Um, so you add a file, name it to what you want, just as long as it's ended in .cfg, um, and that's going to be it. So microprobe.cfg is obviously the easiest to remember on there. Um, once you do that, you open up the file. You'll have a blank file here, of course. I'm going to paste all of this into the description so you can easily just copy and paste and um, change your parameters to match your machine and get you going right away. Just make it plain and simple. Um, and if you don't want to listen to me ramble on about how all this works, then I will just tell you right quick what needs to be done to get you going. So if you just copy and paste, all you need to do is change this line here. Um, whoops. Don't hide it. This here is your output enable pin. Um, so this is the servo pin, the third or the center pin on the probe. Um, this you need to put whatever pin you have that plugged into on the board. Um, so, you know, like for instance, on an SKR2, there's a probe, um, port. So it has, um, the ground five volt and servo servo is what goes here. So whatever that pin number is, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, I have hermit crab. That's because I'm using a separate MCU. This is actually a CAN bus hermit crab. So it's a, it's a separate controller board basically. And that's why I have, it. I'm telling it which controller board to look at. If you have a single controller board, a standard setup, like I said, with SKR2, for instance, then you would just put the pin number, okay? And that's for your your servo pin. And then the other pin you need to know is the um, the, the probe pin or the Z-min pin. And that's what this one is here underneath the probe section. So here, and important thing to remember, you must have this little upside down V symbol there. That is the uptick that tells the uh, controller board to use a pull-up resistor and that's going to um, basically stabilize the sense pin so if you don't have that it can cause a lot of false triggers and stuff like that so if you're having problems double check that that little guy is there um, and again you just put your your pro pin whatever pin that is on the board um, you put that there and you're good to go um, of course you're going to need to do your own offsets it is vital that you get your probe offsets this is the distance from the nozzle to the probe tip um, it's vital that you get these things as precise as possible. Otherwise, you're going to have um, deviations in um, in where the bed mesh thinks that your nozzle is while it's printing. So you might not get the results you're looking for. So make sure you get those measurements proper. Um, your Z offset also needs to be there, but uh, I have it commented out, and I'll show you that in a minute why. Um, otherwise, you come down below here, and you have your uh, bed mesh set up. So you want to make sure to put your own coordinates there for your bed. Um, you have your Z-home. This is your position that you want it, your safe Z-homing, which is pretty much in the center of the bed. This is going to be um, in relation to the nozzle. So um, you have to tell the, the nozzle is so far away from wherever to, to get to, to get the probe in the center of the bed. So basically it's the nozzle center minus the probe, if that makes any sense. Um, just play with the numbers to get them where it is. It's not vital that it's in the center of the bed, but I know a lot of people want it dead center. Um, and that's what these numbers do. You adjust those to move the, the probe over. Um, and then you got screw tilt adjustment. This isn't needed. This is just a nice little feature that um, allows the probe to probe over the screw points on your on your bed to where you adjust it manually. And so it'll do it'll probe all four corners over the screws and then tell you which one you need to rotate counterclockwise, clockwise to adjust it. So it's a nice little feature, but it's not required for the probe to be set up. Um, so. Before I get into describing what's going on here, I will show <clears throat> one other thing you need to know. Because we have made a separate configuration file, you need to include that into the printer configuration file, otherwise it will not work. And to do that, you do this line here, in brackets, you add include, space, and then the name of the file that you made. So uh, of course I named it microprobe.config or CFG, 
and that's what it has here. So this line tells printer config when the printer starts up to include everything that's in that file instead of it just being copied and pasted in here. You can just paste it in here if you want and, and don't worry about creating a new file and that'll work too. Um, it just keeps things more organized if you do it this way. Now, while we're in here, I mentioned about that, uh, I guess we'll go back, about my Z offset being off. And that is because I use the Z calibrate or the probe calibration um, feature on, on Clipper, and that's to um, get a good Z offset. And for some reason, it won't save the configuration unless I have this in here. So I just put one more probe there and then only include the Z offset. Um, and that is so... As you can see, it's commented out here also. That's because when I save configuration, it automatically does that. And then all the way down here at the bottom creates a save config area. And that's where it's now referencing my offset from. So that's why that's like that. That's why things are commented out. Not vital, but if you're going to use the um, probe calibration feature to get your probe, your Z offset as precise as possible, then you're going to want to um, have that probe Oh, where did it go? You're going to want to have that probe in here. So this guy here. Okay. And that's what that's all. That's what it's all about. <laughs> um, that's pretty much all you need to know. Um, but the, I will go a little bit further now. Um, if you've done and followed up to here, then you're good to go. You got it running. Um, but I'm just going to describe why it's different and what's going on here. So in the probe, this is obviously not saying be able to touch same probe. So this is just a generic probe setup. Um, this can control pretty much any type of probe. And this gives you the options of activate and deactivate G-code. Um, so the activate G-code is probe deploy. And that's what this stuff is at the top. So as you can see, it's activating this macro. Um, when, <clears throat> when the probe is sent to activate command, it, it comes up here, does this, which sets the value for the servo pin to, to 1, which means activate it, and sends out the pin. And then when things are done doing its probing, it sends the deactivate code, which is probe stow. And that is there, and that sets the value zero, which retracts the probe, stows the probe. And that's all. That's really the, the main difference in what you need to know from the BL Touch because the BL Touch has their stuff already set up inside the BL Touch function. It's already pre-programmed to do that stuff. Whereas this one is set up a little bit differently, and that's all. Um, I do want to point out: leave this value to zero because that's telling it to. Um, as default to keep the servo pin stowed, or to, yeah, to keep the pin of the of the probe stowed. Um, if you leave that, if you forget that, or you have a one there, it's gonna shoot the pin out, or it can possibly just leave the pin hanging out when you're printing, that's not gonna be good. So leave that there too. Anyways, that is pretty much the gist of it. Hopefully this wasn't too jumbled around and confusing. If you do have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments. I will do my best to help you get you going. If you have any other critiques, comments you wanna leave, definitely do that too, it's more than welcomed. And until next time, thank you for watching. Happy printing.